thank you very much um, for coming out today, taking time out of your day to come and, um, you know, come and look at our, our vision for, um, for the City Place Project. Um, my name is Anand Olson, um, and I've, along with myself and a number of other people here in the room, we're representing uh, ownership of the project. We've got uh, a number of our local uh, um, consultants here as well. You're going to hear from Jesse Beck, our architect. Um, he's going to take us through the plans. Um, but we are, uh, we're just, we're excited to show you our progress over the last 90 days. I know you haven't seen us in three months, but this is the, uh, this is the product that came out of the last 90 days. So um, we're kind of excited to share. Uh, and I'll introduce Jesse Beck. Thanks, Anna. Can, can you hear me? Is that good? How close you bring it to your lips. So uh, we have a slide deck here to walk you through uh, the project as it stands today. To get people uh, oriented again, we all know where the, the site is, but uh, uh, on the top is Cherry Street, Bank Street to the south. The two new streets, Pine Street and St. Paul, just like we had before. Uh, but we will see here, as we've highlighted, uh, 67 Cherry Street, uh, which will be repurposed into a mixed-use building, uh, taking some of the uses from the prior project into that building. And that will be uh, under a completely separate project, uh, separate development. Um, from City Place Burlington. What we're really focusing on today is City Place and the uh, design that we're putting forth. Uh, but at the same time, many of the aspects of the prior project are in this project. So as far as the Great Streets program, New Pine and St. Paul, same project. We are still um, accessing through 100 Bank for the new pine. This is Bank. The loading dock was here prior. That stays. The new St. Paul and Cherry. What has changed is the um, entrances to the parking structure. So entrances to the parking structure off the Saint Paul, new St. Paul and off uh, Pine. There are other points of entry off the, the street level so that we have a public parking access point with elevators and stairs, bicycle entrance with storage, long-term storage, showers, um, and then the main entrances to the south building and the main entrance to the north building. So this is the current program that you're seeing in the slides. And what we have done is we've increased the number of housing units to 357 from roughly 289. That also helps us increase the affordable units to 72 affordable units within that 357. Uh, the change in the program was on the south building, there was a tall commercial tower, glass tower, uh, which we have changed to a 196 room hotel with amenity space on the, on the first floor. We've reduced the amount of retail space around the streets to 45,000. It was upwards over 90,000 prior, and that was because it's primarily a one story retail, not two stories. We're still reconnecting the streets. The parking, the number of parking stalls is 550, and that's all drive-in and their stripe stalls, and 297 uh, bike stalls, both long-term and short-term combined. The overall gross fare footage has reduced roughly 25%. It was over a million prior and we're around 763,000 currently, which is that 25% reduction in total square footage.
So we'll go into renderings and, and give you a good visual uh, around the entire site. Um, this is a vantage point that everyone has seen before, uh, showing the, uh, we've got a little, that was the height prior, the white shadow up top. Oops. And so we are a 10-story building uh, on this corner. And what you're looking at is you're looking down Cherry to the west, the new St. Paul going south, and the residential uh, block on the north building. It's a little better to see the change in mass, height, and scale via this section. This is a section cutting through the buildings north to south. And what you'll see is the height of the previous project in this dark gray. And it's a 50, over a 50 foot reduction in height from a 14 story building to a 10 story building. So we've lowered four stories over 50 feet uh, this is the, the north building uh, of residential. It's really eight floors of residential with a level of retail at street grade. And then an amenity level and mechanical space along the top of the building. Like before, the, the parking is occupying the center of the mass of the site. And we do have a basement level of parking of over 200 spaces. The south building is also lowered. So that's over two stories that we're lowering the south building, which is now the hotel program and amenities with retail, full retail on the street frontage. So that's the cross section of the current project. With the, with the heights. So back to the vision, back to the aesthetics, the materials. Uh, we'll run through a series of renderings and uh, talk about some of the features. This rendering is looking up Church Street towards the east with the new Pine Street, yeah, Cherry Street to the east and the new uh, Pine Street. I mentioned that we still have a full level of retail around the, the base of the streets, activating the street. There are three levels of housing, a step back, another five levels of housing for a total of eight levels of housing, and then the amenity space steps back again on the top, and that's the last story of this, this building. So that's the 10 stories from there to here, and it's nine stories from here to here. Uh, also, I'd like to point out the garage entrance is down the new pine uh, at this location. Some of the materials and features, um, we are looking at primarily a brick building with two colors of brick. Uh, there'll be accents with uh, the bay windows that we had before here, but we're also continuing with bay windows on the upper five levels as well. The, the retail storefronts going down New Pine, you can see 100 Bank and the, the drive through to keep going south. This viewpoint is looking north on the new St. Paul, illustrates the second entry to the parking structure. The, the brick, the brick detailing, bay windows, the second color of, of brick, 
This is the public entrance that accesses the parking structure and elevator to service all four levels of the parking structure. And then the street activation of retail along the new St. Paul. On the south side of the development, we've changed the approach from a glass box for the previous commercial. And now we're looking at a masonry structure, top to bottom, with the lower levels being of a limestone. The previous loading dock remains where it is, next to 100 Bank. The lobby entrance, the hotel entrance, and the public entrance is here. And that public entrance will service the observation deck on this level. And it'll be a full service uh, restaurant on top open to the public with outdoor seating. And you get a glimpse of how the hotel turns a corner and goes up the new St. Paul. Just do that. So again, the, the public observation deck is on this level. For volume, please. The observation deck is on this level right here. Uh, getting closer into the uh, St. Paul and Bank Street. So you're seeing Bank Street going west, 100 Bank, the entrance lobby to this building, and then the corner retail. So just to sort of summarize some of the, the uh, areas that we targeted and the public benefits, uh, we've increased the number of housing units, which does increase the affordable units. We're still reconnecting the two new streets. It's still a sustainable design project uh, going for LEED goal certification. We'll have green roof areas, solar PV, 100% of treatment of stormwater similar to before, it's community access. So we do have the community meeting space, the observation deck open to the public, bathrooms and bike parking and showers. And uh, we feel that the hotel will enhance the, the uh, rooms and meals tax. So this is just a quick summary of the program and what we're trying to achieve. So that's our quick run through of the design, what we've been doing for the last uh, three months. And uh, we'll open it up to questions and answers. And please use the mic in the aisle. Um, it's all set up. And then we'll direct the proper person to answer the questions. A lot of people want to speak, so please uh, keep it as brief as you can. Um. I'm grateful that there's a, a, a community benefit component of the design. It was just described as a community meeting space. So I'm curious, will Brookfield have on staff somebody who is intending to build relationships with community organizations and sustain them and activate this community space? Community space that's indoors in our cold weather you know, region is important. And I wonder if you take that need to heart and, and, and move it forward publicly or if it will be a passive benefit. And I also wonder if you'll be working with the city to animate the amenities of the sidewalk or if they will be as straightforward as they're presented in this presentation. Second half and yeah, I'll do the second half. You do the first half. Sure. <clears throat> Uh, yes, the, the intent is to have that community space be actively managed. Um, we, we already work very closely with your, your business associations, uh, the city obviously, 
Um, we have on-site management. There is, uh, you know, we've got uh, a website and, you know, social media outlets and things like that. So yes, it will be actively managed. And I, I think I can cover the, uh, the, the sidewalks as well. I, um, yes, they will be, they will be activated. Um, it's, it's part of a, kind of a vibrant city. And, and that's the reason why you have retail built into the base of your buildings and written right into your code. So is, is just that, um, we, we like to think that these, these projects are won and lost and like in that first 10 feet of elevation because that's what people see and feel and inter interact with. So um, we like, we like a, an active sidewalk uh, environment. Thank you. Um, how will the affordable housing be configured? Uh, will it be distributed throughout all of the housing or uh, what's your plan for the affordable housing? Um, it'll be, it's, it is distributed around the building, um, you know, maybe not on the top floor, but all generally around the rest of the building, indiscriminate as a single entry into the building, so it's, you know, there's no, the intent is nobody will know what units are affordable and what units aren't. Um, you know, they will be uh, managed in the same way that all the rest of the units are managed. Um, and, you know, we're excited to be able to bring this many affordable units um, to downtown Burlington. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and uh, giving a presentation to us. Uh, the citizens of Burlington have been very anxious to learn more about the project, what's going on with the, what's called here the hole in the ground in the middle of town. Um, I have to say there are a couple of things that you did not address whatsoever, which is, which includes the portion of the property that address that faces uh, Church Street. And of course, we're interested in hearing about that. Um, I have kind of a, might for some people be an esoteric question, but <clears throat> you may have already explained this to the city council, but this being a public meeting, I would like you to explain to us the institutional changes that have, have occurred. So uh, originally the plan was, uh, with Don Sinex was to um, have a 14-story building. We know that uh, somehow something happened and they had to hand it off to Brookfield. And could you just basically explain who the investors are, what the uh, an institutional structure of this uh, planning group is so that we can understand who's accountable for this project? So it is, it is a joint venture um, project between Brookfield and Den Devonwood. Um, and Brookfield, through subsidiaries, has always been involved uh, for several years, even while um, uh, Devonwood was, was leading the project. Um, so that has, has not changed. Um, what has changed is just the scope and scale of the project, the constructability of the project, and that's... that's um, the the ownership doesn't necessarily matter. What what is constructible and was correct for the market, we, we really think is uh, is the most important part of the project. What can be built? Okay, thank you. Uh, would you would, would you, could you please address your plans to uh, show the public your plans for the sections? Um, you talked about redeveloping the Macy's block, and we, we also have that block that faces on Church Street. We need to hear more about that. Uh, yeah, those, those will be addressed separately. They're, um, they're separate applications. There's uh, separate block and lots, and they'll be addressed separately, but we will see you. Hi. Thank you for coming here. Um, I have two questions. One, with the new plan, have you secured financing? And number two, why are you going to start in August instead of in the spring, as soon as you can, when the, it's more typical time? Because we're so anxious to get this going. Really? <laughs> we are too. <laughs> um, I, w listen, we'd love to start in the spring, uh, but 
Uh, it's going to take at least six more months to get through the, the entitlement process through both the city process and the state. There's a state level permit process that needs to be achieved before we can physically break ground. Um, so that's, that is the, uh, the, dr the, the driver of the, the, uh, the schedule right now. And uh, as far as financing, all avenues are being explored right now, including um, Opportunity Zone uh, funds and, um, you know, every, every kind of financing is, is being explored right now. So it's still being explored. It's Correct. not solid. And Correct. is it still Bank of Ozarks is your number one? They, they are still very interested, yes. Thanks very much. Uh, two questions. One, uh, can you give us the time frame for when we can see work start and work finish? Yeah, so as, as Anand said, um, you know, we're currently engaged in a permitting process and this is also still a preliminary schematic design and so the architects have some work to do to turn this into, you know, documents that can be built from. Our, our goal, if everything goes smoothly and nothing gets in the way, is that we'd be under construction hopefully by early fall, August, September, somewhere in that time frame. Um, we think it is a 27 to 30 month kind of construction process probably, um, which would put occupant completion and occupancy out um, towards the end of 2022 or the very early part of 2023. Thanks. I hope the city will be able to tell us what the financial impact of that is. The other question that I have is that um, one of the selling points of this was that it's going to generate 750 new office jobs, uh, and they were going to, that's a, that was a net figure, so no relocations of people that have been moved out of this area. Um, can you tell us what the situation is? You haven't talked about offices at all, uh, and who's on... Who's, um, uh, neck is on the block for the 750 jobs. Well, uh, you know, as we have mentioned, there is, and it, it is a separate project, and there, there will be, you know, public meetings about that project as well. We just wanted to focus this one on the city place piece. But part of the... the but our office is out of the equation for both, both no, projects The now. intention is that the Macy's building will be redeveloped for office use. Um, but you don't have any time frame for that yet? I, I, ideally, it's on a similar time frame. Um, as okay. I said, there will be public opportunities to review that project as well in the near future. Um, and our, our hope would be that, um, you know, we'd be starting construction on that at a similar point in time. We do need some, some commitment of office space to, to do that, um, but we're actively engaged in that process. All right, I guess. Thank you. Hi, I'm glad you're here. I think everyone is. Um, so as a city councilor who didn't support the original plan because of the height and massing, um, I think this is more compatible with who we are in Burlington. Um, I think that the delays for development and the reason why it's more compatible, I'm not happy with what's happened, but I am happy I am more satisfied, and I think others have said that too in the community, with where we are at this juncture. Um, my que I like the materials. I think that I, I need to understand that better. When this, when this process began, this room was crowded with people with lots of hopes and dreams about what this would do for Burlington, and the designs were interesting, um, the bays were actually real bays and not just this inserts of bays to reduce the massing and to make it, as I said, more interesting. So I am a little disappointed in the streamlining of some of the design. I was happy to hear about green roofs and because that the second s set of stories is set back, I didn't know one plan had described potentially putting some small vegetation on the, on the roof, and I don't know whether that's still a possibility. 
I know in, in other states, um, in the south, in Texas, they use trees to absorb some of the heat that comes from just this mass of construction. And so I've, I'm still interested in seeing if that can be, if that can happen. Um, what I also wanted to ask about was that it, people are referencing now what happened to the commercial space. So this was sold as retail, housing, and commercial. And, and right now, you're saying that the office space is now going to be in the Macy's building, which wasn't part of the project at the time. Um, but there was a strong component of that commercial space that had to do with the University of Vermont Medical Center employees who had been located downtown, who were displayed or have moved out, coming back to downtown. This community really wants people to live and work um, and, and remain in Burlington and reduce the transportation issues that currently occur. So uh, the silence about the medical center being part of this project, even though I understand that's a separate project, is is problematic to me, and I would really like to understand that. Um, the other piece is the reduction in retail. Um, I know that retail is is handled differently, but. We had an original square footage of retail in the old mall that was, I don't know, it was far greater than the 90 some odd thousand that was then proposed and now that's been cut in half again. We've lost, we've lost really significant retail because I don't think this project was, was potentially handled in, in the best way. William Sonoma, we lost um, Ann Taylor, we lost Pottery Barn. Those are, those are names that brought people to Burlington. They're not so much affordable, but they're gone, and we're not the kind of community that can snap them, get, catch them back. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, what does this do to our retail? What does this do to bringing people downtown? People come down to Burlington for the Flynn and to eat, but I think we want more than that. Um, so I know I've asked a lot in this statement, because it's a statement and a, and a series of questions, but I think the public and the community as a whole and surrounding people want to understand what will there be here to draw people from outside in, and what will there be here for the community members who once did business in Burlington that were displaced? All right, um, so with respect to the first part of your commentary in the University of Vermont Medical Center, we, we have been engaged since last fall in conversations with them about essentially moving that use from the office tower that's no longer part of this project um, to what we're planning at the Macy's project. Um, those conversations are ongoing, you know, and um, that, you know, they would, it would be our hope that that, uh, that process would simply continue um, and we'd be bringing them downtown into the Macy's building. We don't have a, you know, we had a signed lease in the old building we don't yet have one in the new one, but we are engaged in the discussions and everybody is focused on um, trying to make that happen. So, um, you know, I think with respect to the retail, I understand your perspective. Um, you know, this is, not, this is not a mall building. This is street level retail. Second story street level retail is tough. You know, it is not accessible off the street the way you know, most of us like to walk in and out of doors all the time. Obviously, it can accommodate a, a two-story um, retail element, um, but even those are sort of fewer and farer between. Um, so I, we've been trying to balance um, the calls for housing, the calls for retail, um, and, uh, you know, the need to make sure that this is a project that uh, isn't so big that it is, as we found last summer, sort of too expensive to be able to build, uh, and you know we're we're trying to balance that. We do um, we haven't yet put together a, a firm sort of marketing program on the retail space here yet, um, but essentially all three streets, including four streets, including a portion of New Pine, are are lined with retail, um, and our goal is to make sure that those are vibrant and active, um, and um, are retailers that uh, support the vitality of Burlington. I, 
I think that, you know, I, I mentioned top end retail, but if we're going to have all these people living downtown, you know, the loss of Old Navy, the, the more affordable components, um, the fact that Target went to South Burlington was like someone stabbed me in the heart. Um, I wanted Target here for as long as it, yeah. the late 1990s when my daughter went to college down south. And so um, I, I, the affordability component needs to be part of that also, and I'm hoping that there will be a good mix. Um, and I hope that, that your contacts can attract some named places so people can go if they want to look at high end, if they want to actually see things in a store as opposed to going online. Thank you. Yes, I mean, we do recognize we've got, you know, more than 300 residential units here, including a number of affordable, and a portion of the retail program will certainly want to be uh, services to support, you know, that density of local occupants. So it'll, it'll be a balance between that and the sort of retail that you're speaking of um, that is attractive to a broader, you know, audience. Um, and I'd also mention that we think that the you know, the hotel will bring people into town. The hotel has currently planned for two restaurants, one at the <laughs> lower level and one up on the roof, um, up, you know, adjacent to the publicly accessible uh, observation deck. And so we think that will help bring sort of vitality to, you know, this piece of Burlington, particularly this piece of Bank Street, which is a sort of a little <laughs> left behind at the moment. So. Can one of the people just make a reference about what you def what you mean by green roofs, so that I understand what that means? Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, Kevin Warden, Engineering Ventures, Civil Engineer, and 10% uh, of the roof will be a green roof, and that is something we're seeing more and more of. Champlain College has a green roof. There's some at uh, UVMMC, uh, University of Vermont, etc., and they are basically above the roof system trays that have um, a thin amount of soil and some sort of sedum or other type of vegetation that both uh, hold the rainwater, uh, evapotranspirate it, and then maybe release it slowly, uh, and can survive periods in between rainstorms without irrigation. So it is a, it is a tricky balance, but um, you know, it's a pretty established technology at this point and 10% uh, of this roof will be a green roof. Yep. Hi, Carolyn Bates from uh, Caroline Street. I've been here way before the mall and way before all the houses, well, some of the houses have been torn down, but all the buildings hadn't been burned. Um, I wanted to know a couple of things. One, isn't there supposed to be a component of artist's work? Wasn't it about a half a million dollars of artist's work that was supposed to be in this space? And also, I think 10% of a green roof, only 10% of the roof green is total folly. Chicago is putting green roofs over their entire roofs. Why aren't we doing that too? It would also be very nice if we could have access to those green roofs and let you grow plants that we can eat instead of just seed them, which we can't. What, what, what was the first question? I'm sorry. I, I'm oh, saying is art. that I thought this building had some component for art and that there had been a half a million dollars at least um, offered for that. Yeah, and that, that hasn't changed. We, we may have neglected mentioning that, but you know, all of those sorts of commitments that have been part of the project since the beginning, we absolutely stand behind. Uh, and you know, so you know, that's still part of the goals and objectives. Um, you know, on the, on the green roof piece, you know, there's another portion of the roof that's going to be devoted to photovoltaic, uh, you know, panels. Um, you know, we intend for this building to generate some of its own electricity. What uh, percentage of the roof for solar? You know, I can't remember the, the amount. Well, I'm just asking that you cover the whole roof with green and solar and not have just <laughs> blank spaces. And I hope you won't put great big ugly things on top of the roof like some of the present buildings have that almost are two stories above the actual roof. All right, we'll, we'll take that comment certainly into consideration. Thank you. Lee is next. Hi there. I am Ann Taylor, been here 50 years. Yeah, came to the University of Vermont, Ann. 
to go to med school and be on the ski team. So anyways, I am a physical therapist. Now, I did come to at least 100 city council meetings, okay? And I was in support of all the work that Don Sinex did. And I'm happy to hear that you are going to follow what our city of Burlington people spent a lot of time making sure of. And just like she just said, 10% is not enough. You gotta get, we have the Rubenstein School of Science. Environmental Science. We are wicked green people in Vermont. This is a hippie state, and we are wicked political in Burlington, Vermont. And we lost Don Sinex because of asbestos and the Coalition for a Livable City and its lawsuits. It was way too much, so good. You, Brookfield, are the top commercial developer in the world, so what is all this baloney about, well, we're only doing 10% greenery because we have to protect Lake Champlain. It's a mess. So you have to catch all that water and you have to clean it like incredibly clean because you're so close to the lake. And that is one of the huge requirements of our city. And for those of you who oppose business in Burlington, Vermont, we have lost so much business because there's too much opposition to business. And as, uh-oh. Um, I'm old now and on too much chemicals for stage four breast cancer. Um, he was the one who built the mall, one of the most serious. He owned McAuliffe's. Pat yeah. Robbins, he apologized to everybody. I am so sorry because I took away Pine Street and St. Paul Street. So you guys are giving that back to the city. I'm sorry, I was not here in the beginning and so I missed lots. But, may, and I'm also about accountability for housing. So we're getting full affordable housing, right? which is not for poor people, it's for people who have jobs and can afford that, you know. So I'm very in support of that. So let's be recognized, just make sure, because we work so hard, the development board, the city council, this is a big deal. And you guys build things all over the world. So pay attention, don't mess up what we all worked hard for, all right? Because you guys have money and you're cool, so be wicked cool. Thank All you. right? So. All right. The environment. Just... Do more. Can you do more than 10%? Well, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about the stormwater, because I do think uh, we didn't dedicate nearly enough time in the presentation <laughs> on stormwater, which is uh, what I'm interested in. Yeah. The project's going to treat uh, all water coming off the site um, to the state standards, and that's being done, and this is all in addition to the green roof, in three uh, storage tanks and sand filters that are below grade. Um, so it's an incredibly high rate and um, level of management for stormwater, uh, some of which, actually some of which now flows to the combined system, some of which flows to the College Street watershed, which goes directly to the lake. It will now all be treated and attenuated, which just means slowing it down uh, before it's released to the College Street Big watershed. Time. Yep, so I think it's a great, uh, thanks for bringing that up, and it's a, it is definitely a great component of this project, which will have um, you know, the largest kind of investment in that type of stormwater management um, in the city at this point. And what is Don Sinex doing now? Well, he worked really hard and spent $30 million. Well, as, as Anand said, you know, Brookfield and Devonwood are still partnered on this project. Good. So, um, you know, we're, we're still together working on making sure it gets delivered. Good. Because he worked very hard, and so did the city and its citizens. All right, let's get going. <laughs> August, what are you waiting till August for? Gonna draw per faster. Permits. <laughs> Let me give you some uh, simple ones that uh, keep the momentum going here. 
two on access, one on politics slash cost. On the north on Pine Street, coming north, there's got to be a jog to go around 100 Bank. How are you going to handle that with a bank on the corner? Second one is the access to the public uh, space on the hotel. Does that mean through the hotel? The third one is to what extent do the tariffs that we've had uh, affect this economics of this program a lot or a little? So you got drive. the first one, yeah. you got the second one, you got the third one. And I'll just <laughs> let everyone know up front that there is a line forming in the back, so just be aware of that, please. The, uh, maybe we could circle back to one of the street views, but basically Pine Street, uh, the design of that remains largely unchanged. There are a few tweaks, but uh, it will continue under, if you remember, you would walk under 100 Bank into the old uh, mall where the escalators were. That uh, you can see down on the far right hand corner. It doesn't really jog, it continues right under that area where it is. So it's not the access drive to the garage, which remains. Uh, that'll be filled in for sidewalk. It's to the west of that or to the left of that as you're facing 100 Bank. It does bank. have to jog at the very top though to align with. Yeah, so, so I think you, you questioned about the bank property. So there's discussions between the city and the bank there, um, to, to be able to make that access off of the intersection of Pine and Bank Street. Uh, and then at the top, it doesn't align uh, with the extension of Pine Street, but we're working closely with the city to uh, angle it just a little bit to provide that alignment. And um, then on St. Paul, uh, at the bottom, we've been able to work with the city to angle the southern half of the new St. Paul to align um, with St. Paul there. And at the north end, um, with the transit center, it's reverse circulation anyway, so the new St. Paul will align with one of the um, transit center uh, road segments. So I think the second question was public access. So the, the, uh, the south building has all that retail street frontage. There will be the lobby uh, which is a joint lobby for public and hotel access, both into the building, south building, to the elevator cores and into parking. So it's almost like a walkthrough. And then you can get on any elevator, go right up to the, uh, the observation deck. And then, Enan, you wanna take the tariff question? And <clears throat> tariff. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, tariffs, uh, the, the tariffs are having an impact on uh, material pricing. Um, they are kind of material at this point, but they are um, things we can work around. I have a question regarding district heating. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about trying to capitalize on the waste heat from the McNeil wood chip plant. And uh, so I wanted to see what the status of that was from your end, if there are things, obviously that system hasn't been built out yet, but what accommodations the project's making if and when that were, were to happen so that you could capitalize on that. And if you could just update us on where we would stand with district heating. Sure, it's uh, like the previous project, we'll have a room and uh, conduit to accept it once you get the infrastructure gets in place so we are preparing for it for the future and the building is still part of the uh, 2030 energy district of Burlington so we're still pursuing all those avenues good afternoon thanks so much for being here uh, as I think it's probably safe to say that there isn't one person in this community that hasn't been wondering and waiting to hear from you for quite some time. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. The first is that um, for those who have been here for since the inception of when this first began, which was about five years ago, um, uh, and for those who haven't, um, this project has been a series of uh, euphoric beginnings, continued work, then a stop, then a start, then another stop. Um, and I think what has made this project difficult for many people is that when there is a stop, there tends to be no communication at all. And sometimes it's best to simply say that you're working on something rather than saying nothing. Because when you say nothing, people will fill in the blanks. And I think it would be good, you know, you're here today and we're grateful that you're here today 
today is the end of January, you're talking about potentially a start in August, there may be roadblocks that come up between now and August. And I would just simply ask that this not be another start followed by a stop. That if there is a problem and there's a roadblock, that you, that you communicate that and not leave us hanging. Um, the, uh, the other comment that I have is that, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the media and certainly in other places about pending lawsuits, either those that you've initiated or those that others have initiated. I would simply ask that in the interest of moving forward, that all of you come together and figure it out so that we can start moving on this together. Um, I know that that means that nobody's going to get everything that they want, but we need to start moving forward. Um, and I think you want that too. Um, the, uh, the questions that I have are two. One is that when you came to a city council meeting a couple of months ago, you said that you had a term sheet. Um, now what I hear you saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, Bank, of, Bank of the Ozarks is very interested in the project. Does very interested in the project mean that you have a term sheet with them, or does it mean that you that term sheet has expired and has not been renewed and you're still working on it, so you haven't solidified completely the financing for the project? And then the other is that since you're going down to 10 stories, have you um, amended or done anything with a shade study so that we have an idea of where that will fall in terms of the project so that you know, on a day like today, when it's sunny, even though it's 20 degrees out, it's possible to be outside comfortably if you're in the sun. If there is a large, large area that is basically in the shade, um, I, think, I think there are people that would like to know that. So again, thank you so much for being here, and um, we're all looking forward to you moving forward. Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Jesse take the shade question. Um, the the financing question, um, it is that term sheet with Bank of the Ozarks was for a different project. It was for a much larger project. So, um, as the as the project has evolved, as the budget evolves, that those those terms and those amounts change. So, we are working on um, updating it to the, the to the new project. Okay, and as far as the, uh, the shade is concerned? Yeah, we're working towards a full application for planning and zoning, and we'll have the shade analysis and shade studies as part of that okay. submittal. We've, we've also started looking at preliminary to place the green roofs in the right locations on the roofs and look at the PV orientation, so. Okay, and then the other thing I, um, I, I should have actually worded it in terms of a question and not comment. When it comes to communication, do we have your word going forward that you will be in constant communication with the community? And when I say constant, I mean um, on a monthly basis that you will, um, you will keep us updated. Yes, we will keep you updated. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation and, and all the thought that went into uh, revising this project. It, it seems to be a really good fit for our community, and I'm excited to see it uh, come to fruition. Uh, the one question that I have is, out of the 357 housing units, will any of those be for sale, or are they all rentals? They're all rentals at this time. Hi there, I have a couple of uh, quick questions. Uh, what direction does the restaurant face? Uh, primary orientation is south and southwest. Okay. Um, what are the city's penalties or incentives for delays or failure to deliver? Or is it just, I mean, if, right, let's right say now. that we're still planning two years from now, is there Maybe you can't speak for the city, but what keeps you guys on task? Well, yeah, wanting, wanting to get a project completed, um, and as well as there will be an amended development agreement with the city that will uh, lay out time frames. Okay, so as of now, it's just sort of open-ended, not really any 
real that's penalties other than the loss on your side. Correct, and that and that's pretty typical of a development project of the of this size, and there will be a development agreement um, executed with the city. Sometimes. Um, I've also been made aware from local media, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Brookfield also does or will control the Winooski branch, the extension of rail from uh, Burlington to Essex, which could ultimately open up train service from New York to Montreal through Burlington. It seems like Brookfield really has a huge stake in the future of Burlington, almost controlling it to a certain extent. Does that affect your thinking at all? Um, I know a lot of the public has been struggling with how to handle the return of rail service to Burlington, presently stopping in Burlington and overnighting in Burlington. That could be changed if that Winooski branch were open, allowing the trains to overnight in St. Albans and also continue on to Montreal. Does that interest you guys at all, if that could bring millions of more people to, through Burlington? Yeah, our, our infrastructure group runs the, the, the railroad um, investment, and w this team here does not have anything to do with, with the railroad, and we'll make that clear. Um, we, d we do not know what their, their plans are it, uh, at this time. Okay, thank you. I'm just wondering what the size of the apartments are going to be. Are they going to be for single people or families or couples? What the range is? Sure. Um, we have both studios, one bedrooms and two bedrooms. The average size of the studios is 550. The one bedrooms is 820. And the two bedrooms are 1150. Okay, thanks. Square feet. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not metric yet. Not metric. Somebody uh, wanted me to ask another question. question. What, what will the rentals look like, the cost? I got sent back. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, um, on the affordable side, those, are, those rates are essentially set by the city through formula. Um, Are the affordable ones going to also be a range of studio, one yes. bedroom, two bedroom? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, like the and um, the on the on the market rate side, um, I, I don't have I don't have gross numbers. I don't have you know dollars per month numbers in front of me for you. But we've we've looked hard at what the market is both in the city and in the surrounding areas, and we're very much consistent with uh, with what that range is. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Rick Sharp. My wife and I own uh, Burlington Segways, um, which is highly uh, dependent upon tourists, of course. Uh, so we're very happy to see another hotel downtown. I think it's great that uh, Burlington went from one hotel for the last 40 years to this will be number five, number six maybe over at uh, the Bose property. And, number seven over at the old uh, Y. So that's a lot of hotel rooms downtown. I think that's great uh, for downtown Burlington, for shopping, for um, restaurants, um, for the vitality of the downtown. So I'm looking forward to um, your hotel, um, and I compliment you on bringing that into the project. Mr. Sinix did not, he ruled that out because of comments. So um, I think it's a good thing. Um, I, don't, I saw that the, the face of the building looked to be a white, Structure. I don't know exactly what you're using for the facing, but um, I am highly, um, I really like Vermont marble, and I would hope that you would consider um, a sur surface of Vermont marble. Uh, that would be uh, very appropriate for the largest city in the state of Vermont. So if you're going to make it a light color like that, please consider Vermont marble. Um, the final thing that I'd like to say is uh, communication-wise, um, I agree with Karen Paul that um, the lack of communication has been a real problem here. I think everybody in this room wants this to succeed. We do not want the, whole the big hole that has been in the downtown for the last year and a half. Everyone is concerned about that. Everyone wants closer communication with you. I feel a little bit of tension between the audience here and you at this time. 
I'm hoping that you can get over that tension by earning our trust. And the way that you earn our trust is to communicate with us, okay? Then I think that your permitting process will go much easier as well, okay? That means telling us what you're doing, a weekly basis if you have to do it. Uh, Mr. Sinek's actually took out ads in the paper to keep people up to, what, uh, to, uh, up to date to what was going on, okay? One of the things I would have suggested here today is I've been to a lot of meetings where we talk about things like this. There's usually a handout that shows you what the buildings are gonna look like, what the front's gonna look like, how you're gonna go underneath there. It's great to see it on the screen, but um, I would suggest that part of the communication process is to think about the people that you're servicing here. They're very involved, that's why they're here at noon, okay? You, can, you need to give them more information, which means handing something out so we can actually see what you're talking about rather than what's up on the screen. So I hope that um, you can do better with your communication in the future, and I hope you um, stay close in touch with this community. It'll make everything go better. It'll make us feel a lot better. It'll make our business do a lot better because you'll get your construction going quicker. Thank you. Thank you, we appreciate your input, and Councillor Paul, also yours, and you know, I, I think we've heard that message, and so you'll be hearing more from us. Thank you for showing up and trying to communicate with all of us. Some of you know me, some of you don't. I was here during urban removal I watched your area go down the wayside, okay? So now we have a big hole. Barry has a big hole, the number one biggest hole in Vermont, the quarry. Newport City, Vermont has a big hole, number two biggest hole in Vermont. And now the Queen City has number three biggest hole. I want something in that hole and waiting till August, come on. The other thing I want to know about is you increase the housing in order to get affordable housing. I have an issue with that, okay? First of all, the definition of affordable housing, you know, <laughs> come on. I live on $1,200 a month and I'm, I own a home and I'm barely making it. I work in a business, a small business on Cherry Street for 45 years, okay? You gotta think about this now. The people you wanna put in these buildings have to really be able to afford what's going on downtown. And if you're gonna think about clearly where you wanna put those affordable units, give them a view of the sunset. Give them a view of the sunrise, okay? Let's not be stingy on where you're gonna put the affordable housing units. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, th I think it's, it, it's, it, you know, it's fair to say we increased the amount of residential not because we wanted to get more affordable. That obviously is a, um, is a positive side benefit, but the goal was we heard a call for more residential downtown in general, and so that was the, that was the focus on that. Um, and, uh, you know, as I said, our goal is to mix the units up um, and, um, you know, we want this to be a very lively and successful project for everyone who's there, so. I also forgot to mention one thing. The uh, jut outs of the balcony, could you, could you cons consider what the Richardson Place has with their nice wrought iron balconies? That just looks like a high-end elevator. I am so terribly excited about you doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. Uh, it's about time that we had something happening there. And you sound like, it, it sounds like you guys are really into making it happen and making it happen well, thank you. Now, the thing that I would like to see happen is on top of the building, if we had a green space, a big green space, like a lot of buildings and a lot of cities have, because we cut so many trees down in Burlington. It would be nice to have a place to go to where we're help, helping the environment as well as giving people a place to go. And I like the idea of the observatory, the 
platform, but let's make it big and let's make it welcoming. Let's make it a place that tourists want to come to, the top of the whatever you're going to call it, <laughs> like the top of the mark. And uh, I, I'm very excited about being able to see in every direction. This is a million dollar view we have here. And uh, you can really excite the world to come here and, and enjoy it. And I'm so happy you're doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep. Hi, most of my questions were already addressed, but I did have one. How many uh, move in, move out residential loading bays for the, the move in and move out of the residences are there? You're asking about load in, load out? Yeah, move in and move out. I lived in a, yep. in a, in a condominium in Washington, yep. D.C., which I will show you pictures of later. And the other guys had them, but didn't seem to find them in for interesting. Yeah, and good. there was quite a few loading bays for people to move in and out. And it was very restrictive how to get in and out with, with that many residences, 300 and some. I'm just curious, how many loading bays do you have for move in, move out for residential purposes? In, in this project, we've actually added a separate loading dock for the residential uh, north building. So it has its own dedicated uh, loading dock. And at the same time, there's access to the other loading dock to the south side. So, so there's we've added, two? We've added a, a loading dock. So there's a total of two for the 374? Yes, but they handle more than one truck. So Yeah, well, that's what I mean. So they, they actually, well, that's what I meant, the bays. So, so there's four in each loading yes. area or something like that? Two in each. Two in each, so there's a total of four. Yep. Okay, that was, the, that was the question. And then the other question I had that was sort of asked about the district heating, um, you said you were building a room in the basement to do that. How does that work with the actual apartments? Is this, um, are you using a, a boiler system so they would have uh, hot water, heat? Um, I'm, just, I'm just curious about how you would actually implement the, uh, the, the fixtures of, for heat in the, bill, in the apartments in the rest of the building when you're, you know, anticipating using the district heating uh, in the future? It will change over the infrastructure, so the infrastructure will be set up to each of those units so they can be changed over to use the district heat. So it would be baseboard, hot water, boiler type of a heating or? Well, heat pumps is the direction we're going in. Okay, so they each would have heat pumps initially in the units separately? They would, okay, so they wouldn't be part of a system Wide heating. Okay, thanks. I just kind of wonder in your nice green space that you're talking about, if you're planning on putting a lot of cell towers up there too. I think those are on 100 Bank. Yeah, well, they're kind of everywhere. They're going up on our building now where I'm living, so I'm just kind of wondering, you know, that's not cool. Thanks. else? Hey, Al. Nice to see you. Um, thanks. You're probably trying to suss out at some level how real we are. We were very combative with some of the aspects of the previous incarnation of this product. Um, I tried to help as best I could. I helped Don Sinex work the buttons when he couldn't do his presentation out in the New North End. So. I think there's a case to be made that we are in support of development, and uh, I hope that we can also underline for you that you have a real opportunity here, not only to rejuvenate a city, but also rejuvenate an entire state, an entire population that is under duress, and they're really nice people. One thing about Vermonters is we're willing to make sacrifices, economic sacrifices. We could be in Dallas right now making, making more money, um, but we're here. We make sacrifices on a daily basis in terms of our labor, in terms of our values in order to lead the way in the United States with vision of a society we wanna see. You can help with that. So if you're trying to suss out, what are these people are about? Are they for real? Do they want us here? Yes, we want you here. We know you have your act together. I've looked under the hood of your organization. You guys have the money, you have the acumen, and you have the connections to make it happen. 
what everybody in this room wants to know from you right now, because we've been down this road with the Pied Piper. He may not have known that he was the Pied Piper, but we tried to warn people. Are you for real? Yeah, we, we wouldn't be sitting here right now if we weren't for real. Um, we, we've, you know, we appreciate what the city has been through in the last year and a half, and um, we absolutely do, do take you for real. This is an incredibly vibrant city. You've got an extremely engaged population, and we appreciate that because these, these projects are... are, are um, Public engagement is, is important, and, and your input is important to us. Um, so we would not be here um, if we weren't for real. Um, and thank you. I'm sorry. I um, Encore. sorry about that. Encore. I hadn't actually planned to come up, but one thing that, with the last couple of questions and your comments, I, I am interested in knowing about is, you know, I'm, I'm sure that this is will be a it's a business, you know, contract for you, and your firm will benefit from that financially. But I wonder what you're seeing you're going to get out of this project in terms of just your profile, your uh, your desires as developers. Well, what do you see? that's in it for you? Um, I, I think what, what this project um, represents, and, and it's something that we're working on all across the country. Um, we recently acquired a, a, a company that owned 150 shopping malls across this country. And what this, what this project kind of represents in, in one city block is the thesis for uh, retail space and retail real estate for for everywhere in the country is is mixed use downtown um, uh, vibrant developments where these malls and and your mall was the same your mall was the center of commerce for a long time in, in downtown and and what we want to do is try to bring that back and, and that's what we're studying kind of all across the country so what this is is kind of a a poster child for um, for mixed use development and and kind of retail reinvention. Um, so that's you know that's what you get. And what you have here organically, I've, I've told this a lot of, to a lot of people. What you guys have here organically and what you've built on Church Street over the last 50 years um, is incredible. And and there's lots of cities around the country that would that, that are trying actively to create what you guys have created. Sometimes successfully, sometimes not. Um, so what we want to do is just try to, to try to enhance what you've already got. I just um, I've watched a lot of housing happen in Burlington over the last few years, and all of it is studios, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms. And we are in a state that's worried about um, families and kids growing up and staying here. I'm concerned that um, there's no family housing really in this, um, in this development. And, you know, we have schools we have to support and things like that. And we'd like to have people stay and maybe spend a lot of time. So, um, so if you have a son and a daughter, good chances you can't stay in a place like this. And also any long-term plans where people could actually own their units and be that more tied to the community and stay here for a long time and not just to have the, the rent go out, out of state and things like that. So I'd like that to be the, wrapped in somehow or some thoughts around that. Right. Um, and one of the benefits of a um, kind of a large rental pool like this, um, are, it's going to free up a number of uh, single family houses around, around the city for, for young families to move into. They may not be moving into our building, but um, you know, older people that don't necessarily want the upkeep of a, of a single family home and sh shoveling snow and sweeping the sidewalk can move into this building, freeing up that single family house for a family. And that, that's kind of the, the ripple effect that we see.
Yeah, so uh, thank you guys for coming out. We'll be here, we'll be back here right in these chairs at seven o'clock.